Are you struggling to implement innovation and change within your organization? With a unique human-centered innovation approach, Orange Sparkle Ball, or OSB, helps organizations break through roadblocks and pain points to achieve measurable results. OSB is not your typical consultancy. OSB's agile approach to innovation allows you to move quickly to action and achieve measurable pilot results. Learn more how you can drive innovation and success in your organization. Contact OSB today at hello at osb.co. That's hello at osb.co. Hello, friends, and welcome to your Daily Detroit. It is Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. We are not in Detroit. Now, we are up on Mackinac Island covering the Mackinac Policy Conference. I am Jer Stays, and we are recording overlooking the beautiful Mackinac Bridge. Today, we're going to talk about water, and specifically, Candace Miller is our guest. She is the Macomb County Public Works Commissioner. We cover a ton of topics, whether it is sewage overflows, uh, outflows in the lake, the deal with Highland Park, so much more. So it's an interesting conversation, especially if you're interested in the intersection of getting things done and also taking care of the environment. I'll just roll that tape. Joining me here at the table at the Grand Hotel, Macomb County Public Works Commissioner, Candace Miller. Welcome back to Daily Detroit. Thanks so much, Jer. Happy to be here. I'm so glad to talk to you because you're so clear and able to talk about the issues that are happening, the intersection of our public works, our nature, all those things. And I appreciate the passion that you bring to this job a lot because I think that these kinds of jobs are the things that make everything go and and they touch people every single day. That's absolutely right. And, you know, in regards to underground infrastructure, and that's sort of my, my phrase up here as I'm talking to people at the Mackinac Conference, you know, you think about it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. So sometimes we don't have the political will to want to invest the kind of capital dollars that we need to to fix some of the things that have happened over generations, I guess. But it's really very important. And I think particularly when you're at Mackinac Island, looking out these windows, I wish your listeners could see how, you know, it's talk about pure Michigan and mm-hmm. surrounded by all this clean, fresh water. And that's part of what we try to do at the Public Works Office. We have a lot of different projects that are purely looking at how we can improve our water quality in uh, whether it's the Clinton River or Lake St. Clair or what have you. Yeah. A couple of years ago, you all probably had among your uh, worst days as far as natural events. And a lot of the region dealt with it, too, when it came to stormwater and flooding. What has been the reaction to this and what are some of the things that you're working on to say, all right, let's try to make sure that these kind of things uh, don't happen again or mitigated or reduced? Well, there's a whole series of things that you have to look at because whether it's climate change, I mean, I, I, you know, you can argue about that, I guess, but something is happening with the climate. We're getting a lot more precipitation at a greater intensity levels. So we have to think about some of the older communities all over, really, where they have inadequate underground infrastructure. And we can't just have these rain events and then people discharging sewage out into the lake. That's so, been a thing more. In fact, the city forever. of Detroit. Well, yeah, and the city of Detroit's considering a couple of those pipes. I know Gross Point is considering one of those pipes. Like, what do you think of that as an option? Because it seems like some people are like, okay, I don't want my basement flooded, so I'm going to do, like, the emergency route. Yeah, I think you have to uh, approach this thing incrementally, and I think you always have to keep an eye toward water quality. So let me just tell you, in very technical terms, discharging raw sewage or even treated sewage is bad, in my opinion. So I can, you know, I'll only speak to Macomb County. We are literally investing tens of millions of dollars in different kinds of projects. We've already reduced our combined sewer overflows by somewhere in the 30 percentile already. We have another project that will come online in the fall that will reduce them by another 12%. Then I have another project that I'm just getting bids for almost as we speak here that could be about a year and a half, two year project that will reduce them again by another 30%. So you have to keep plugging away at it. We just really seriously, generationally, we are dumping raw sewage or treated sewage into Lake St. Clair, which is not only an area that we recreate in, whether you're fishing there or at the beaches or what have you. By the way, it is our drinking water supply as it goes down the Detroit River. So we really need to invest and do what we need to do to separate sanitary sewer from stormwater so you don't have to build these relief valves, I guess. 
Mm, yeah. And that takes investment and effort. But are you finding support in Macomb County to help you do that? Yes, we are. I'll tell you right now, with all the different projects I have going on, I have about $180 million worth of projects that are happening right now where we're fixing our uh, sanitary sewer interceptors where we had the sinkhole previously. We're never going to have another sinkhole where we're doing all kinds of value engineering to reduce our combined sewer overflows. And, you know, I like to think with all of the legislative experience that I have had, I can have that positively accrue to my community because I've been successful in uh, raising some money for that. We've raised about $120 million so far. So I got a big earmark last year from the state legislature. Uh, Just recently, my county uh, appropriated $40 million towards some of our projects. uh, These are with the ARPA, the federal funds. Both of our United States senators have been very helpful. I have a couple of things in this budget that's making its way through Lansing right now. And, you know, I'm just because people go, well, who's your lobbyist? Uh, well, you're looking at her, you know. <laughs> I mean, one thing I've learned, Jer, is uh, if you want to hunt ducks, go where the ducks are. OK, so if I got to go to Lansing or go to Washington, I'm uh, I'm trying to pay for these projects. And, you know, at Mackinac, everybody's talking about how the population is declining in the state of Michigan. That's really a big part of the conversation. And I think the kind of projects that we are doing in Macomb and hopefully in other areas here is going to be part of the decision making of younger people. Because, yes, economics is a driver, but also quality of life is a driver. And they have huge quality of life here in Michigan. But we need, can't keep polluting Mother Nature here. Totally understand that. And, you know, Macomb County has some very unique resources. I mean, so much shoreline and so much what I'd like to call like accessible and activated shoreline where yes. people live on it and do things. You know, in other areas, it's a lot of industrial and things like this. But Macomb County, it's nature, it's shoreline, it's all these things that if you're into that, like, you know, to use the kind of the term out there, make Macomb your home. But if you're into that... That's the kind of place you want to be, and protecting that, I feel like, is something where you can win some friends and influence people up there. Well, besides that, you know, our county executive and myself, we all of us, we all talk about the blue economy. And what we mean by that is we recognize how blessed we are to have all of these natural resources. We do want to protect them, but they are a huge economic driver for us as well. So all of that is important. And, you know, even as you go inland a little bit, a lot of our projects do have an impact on what's going on in the lake. And I'll just give you a quick one. There's a huge drainage district called the Sterling Relief Drain that drains most of Sterling Heights, all the industrial, all of this kind of thing. And we've got a lot of grants and spent millions of dollars of what we call daylighting that. So we take out the old metal CMP pipe. We let Mother Nature do her thing with absorbing thousands of tons of sediment, Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus. We've planted uh, all this green infrastructure with uh, trees and shrubs. And uh, we also have done a lot of planting on the invert, so much so that we've created a two and a half mile butterfly flyway. And uh, it's all very cool stuff. So, you know, we're in the drain business, but there are other ancillary spinoffs that can be positive for everyone's quality of life. When some of these decisions were made decades, lifetimes ago to bury a lot of these things. If you look at, you know, old maps of Detroit is, you know, you can see all the creeks that were, were there. Like people forget like down in Detroit, Grand Circus Park was a swamp. Like, and in Macomb County, you know, all those different things are, you look at the location of Mount Clemens and the river that's right there. And I think that if you can open that up and access that nature and say, it's not terrible to have that stuff out there because it's not like it's something that's a a gross thing to see. It it can add a lot of beauty to it, right? As opposed to just being pavement. It's really true. And, you know, we have a lot, like in Macomb Township, that's a good example, okay? They're not right on the lake, but they have uh, branches of the uh, Clinton River that go through. There's a lot of uh, larger drains that go through. And we've been really trying to clean up the drains, open them up so that, first of all, they they work very well. But then people are starting to take care of them. Now they're mowing them. Now they've got bridges over them. Guess what? The ducks are in them. The swans are in them. Suddenly, rather than someplace where they used to dump their leaves, they look like a beautiful natural asset, part of the landscape, and it actually adds economic value to their homes. So uh, we're doing a lot of that work uh, all around Macomb County. Yeah. Yeah. Last time we talked and there's been some progress on this uh, Highland Park. There's been some work done around trying to make that whole. What are your thoughts on that resolution so far or attempted resolution? I'm not exactly sure where it is. It's not. Is it appropriated? Is it where? Where is that? Uh, there is some money in the budget. I think 20 million. Okay. I don't know how that will because they haven't voted it yet. To, okay. Now, that money would be used not directly to Highland Park, but to reimburse the suburbs for some of the money that we have. You know, we've been all paying 
everybody in the Great Lakes Water Authority has been paying Highland Park's bills for about 12 years. So to be clear for listeners, it's not like there's like a, a gap there. It's okay, everybody else pays a little bit more to make it whole. And then you're, it's paying it back as opposed to everyone's paying and then there's a hole in the budget that's the size of $25 million for Highland Park. You know, if that happens, we'll see whether or not that happens. I think what most people are looking for is how are you going to resolve this going forward? Because Highland Park is in such a terrible financial... Mm-hmm. Uh, let me look at... After the auto plants left, it has been in a world of hurt there. You have now less than 9,000 people living in Highland Park. And their infrastructure is so bad that two-thirds of their water and sewer bill is just waste. In other words, the water's running down the roads. It's just leaking everywhere, you know, and yet they're still paying for this. So something has to happen. I know emergency managers are a bad term, maybe, but uh, have a bad connotation. Well, but-, but even if you put an emergency manager in there, if you don't fix the underlying issues, yes. and we learned in Detroit that although an emergency manager can do things, there's still stuff left over. Yeah. You know, we had Eric Lufer from this uh, Citizens Research Council. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with them. Yes. And he made a really interesting point, not just Highland Park, but a number of very small municipalities across Michigan. Does it make sense? And that's not a question for you or I to answer, yeah. even though I live a few blocks away from Highland Park. Yeah. It's not a question for us to answer necessarily, but that's a question we need to think about in that, like, if you can't take care of your bills, does that really serve the citizens? And that's a very hard question to have. Yes, it is. And it'll be interesting to see what the governor does because Highland Park has asked for bankruptcy. They want to go into expedited bankruptcy. But, you know, I think they have an idea, talking about Detroit, that there would it's going to be sort of like what happened to Detroit. Well, Detroit had a lot of assets. Mm-hmm. Start with a DIA, okay? Yeah. <laughs> they had assets. Highland Park, not so much. They have nothing but liabilities. So it's a very difficult question. One thing I would say, I know a lot of people say, well, just shut the water off. Listen. There are women there with babies. You can't just shut off the water. But going forward, we have to come to some resolve because they have to be a participant. One thing I would say to Highland Park, and I know they have a lot of challenges, but they have spent literally millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars on legal fees to try to prolong all of this for 12 years. And they need to forget the litigation at this point, in my opinion, and come to the table as honest brokers, and let's all just try to come to a resolve with them. It's We all recognize they're in a bad situation. Oh, yeah. But going forward, something has to happen. Oh, for sure. And you know, I'm thinking about the story of uncovering those uh, rivers and those drains and things. Mm-hmm. If you go back into the history of Highland Park, there's a reason they have such an interesting and different system. It's because of Henry Ford, and he didn't want to be part of the greater system. So they have their own water thing and all this other infrastructure. Oh, yeah. that none just, of it works. None of it works, and none of it makes sense in the modern context. Because like, yeah. I live in the North End. When that happened, the North End was called the North End because that was the end of Detroit. Yeah. That ended there. It was built in a different time in a different world with a different amount of people. But look, they have the Woodward Corridor running through Highland Park. I mean, you have all this development on Woodward and then it stops, Mm -hmm. right? There's opportunity there. There's opportunity there, I believe. Mm -hmm. But they have to have a little bit of help. And I think the state, um, God bless the governor, she's going to have to make a decision here. You know, I know the Treasury Department is trying to come to uh, an idea of what to uh, require. But again... They need to drop the litigation. If they would have spent all that millions of dollars on their water bill, you know, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. But it's a very difficult situation. But the suburbs have sort of lost their sense of humor of paint. Because, look, you can drive around some neighborhoods in Macomb County, Oakland County, Wayne County, outside of Highland Park. Guess what? They're all paying their water and sewer bills. So, wait a minute. This can't keep going on. Yeah, and... Poverty and economic hurt exists in those counties, too. I mean, there's areas of both of those counties where there are challenges. Yeah. Let's focus on the future and Macomb County. What are you looking forward to in the next year that you hope you can talk and brag about the next time we talk next year? Actual completion of some of these projects that I was talking to you about. I hope that by the fall I'll be done with a $30 million sewer rehabilitation project on 15 Mile by the ITC Corda. I hope that by next year I'll be done with a $20 million project by 15 and Garfield rehabilitation project. We are completing one at 21 and Garfield, which is a sewer rehabilitation project. I'll be uh, done with uh, what I call in-system storage, which will reduce our CSOs. I'm doing, uh, I mean, I could go on and on here. I got a lot of stuff going on, Jer. (laughs) And uh, we find them, we fix them, we're inspecting things. We're on the move there and we're taking care of our infrastructure. What's on the wish list? Like on the big, hairy, audacious goals, whatever you'd say in the corporate world, what's on the wish list for you? I think more things to separate sewers and to uh, really complete and uh, completely eliminate CSOs in Macomb County. 
that's a little bit more of a long-term thing, but as I say, we're well on our way. Uh, you know, all of these things take money. They take public support, and they take a political will, and it is difficult, as I say sometimes, because, look, I'm talking to somebody in Macomb Township who's complaining about, you know, traffic control that we've put up at 21 in Garfield, and uh, I finally said to the, these people, I want you to look at this video, which shows you what this interceptor looks like, and if we don't fix it now, it's going to collapse. And what will that do to your business or your home or whatever? You know, we have to fix these things. It's a lot of public outreach, public education, So because we're spending a lot of money, mm -hmm. their money, right? Whether I'm getting it from other sources or whatever. It's, all it's eventually the people's money in general. It's the people's general. money. And, you know, I've been very gratified that we've had huge amount of support from our citizens. In fact, when I run into people at the frozen food section at Kroger's, um, they don't usually say, oh, my God, you're wasting all this money. They usually say, you know, I've been following this and... Have you ever thought about doing it this way, you know, mm -hmm. which I take as a very positive sign. So they're engaged. They know it has to happen. And they're thinking about what's the best way to do it. When you're looking at a lot of these projects, obviously, there can be one off events and, and things like that. But is a lot of this father time like it's oh, been installed, yeah. whatever. Is, is that really what you're you're, oh, yeah. you're dealing with here for the most part? I mean, all infrastructure has a uh, finite life, right? In so many cases, the life expectancy is way beyond what it was ever designed for. Really? And uh, Oh, yes. Because, I mean, people cases, think about the suburbs. They think yeah. it's newer construction, so it's way beyond. This interceptor, for instance, it was put in in the 70s, right? I mean, okay. that's a long time. So you have to maintain certainly what you have. And if you haven't maintained it now in our county, that's really what we've been guilty of, I think. And uh, we've not maintained it the way that we should have because it's easier to spend it on something else until your house falls into a sinkhole. Then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you've got, you know, a problem. Yes. Anyway, but yeah, uh, you know, in the older areas, uh, southern areas in Macomb County, that's where the, all the combined systems are. You okay. know, now you build the newer subdivisions in a Macomb or Shelby or what have you, and they, we don't have those combined systems anymore. There's all of those kinds of things. We still have a lot of septic tanks that are failing, and, you know, mm. that all adds to... Uh, issues. So, you know, there's different things, but we're working on all of these issues all at the same time. We're very committed and committed to our a better environment. And we're committed to wanting to keep our young people living still, hopefully in Macomb County, or at least in our region, in our state. And uh, we think some of the things we're doing hopefully will lead to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Candace Miller, thank you so much for stopping by the table. I appreciate you and uh, hopefully see you next year. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. And that is it for today. If you've got feedback, dailydetroit at gmail.com. Send me an email or a voice memo for the air. Special thanks to producer Cheyenne Nocerini, who is up here with me, helping keep everything going on, as well as the team downstate. All right, we will be back tomorrow with a conversation with Norris Howard as we break down a Gallup Detroit residence survey. Some really interesting things with that. They'll be in your feeds tomorrow morning. With that, I am Jer Stays. Thank you so much for listening and supporting your daily Detroit. Take care of each other, and we'll talk tomorrow.